South Bay. Happy Sunday. Anybody glad to be at church today? Yeah, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Listen, why don't you stand with us? We're going to start with this old song. You're going to know it as soon as you hear it. We hope you enjoy it.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for that happy day, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can live in your happiness and in your joy even right now. Because you are our God, because you keep us, because you love us, because you make ways out of no way. Because we belong to you, victory belongs to us, God. And so this morning, we rejoice in you, we bless you, and we love you, God. We sing our praise to you this morning, Father. Be blessed by everything that happens in this service. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said amen. 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 Do you love the Lord this morning? Can you turn and tell somebody that you love them? Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
celebrate your name. There's nobody like you in all the earth, God. We honor you in this moment. We bless you, God. You've been so good to us. Your love toward us is amazing. Anybody's testimony of that this morning? Isn't God's love toward you? Amazing. Amazing. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done. So I invite you just to turn your whole heart to the King this morning. Forget about us on this stage and let's sing about our love affair with God. Amen. See you. 
worship this morning. Come on, somebody open your heart, open your mouth to the King. Thank you for your love this morning, God. Thank you that your love never changes, oh God. Thank you that your love is everlasting, God. Hallelujah. You're an amazing God. Hallelujah. As we stand in this place of just reflecting on the love of God, I invite you just to take a moment and just settle your heart and think about where you are in your life right now. What does God's love mean to you? Where will we be without that love? How could we face our tomorrows without his love? How have we made it this far had it not been for his love? His love is amazing. It never changes. It's everlasting. That means it'll outlast anything that we do. It'll outlast any problem that we face. And so I wonder in this moment if we could just lift our hands to God and just thank him. Ah, can we thank him for his love this morning? Ah, can we be assured this morning that we are loved just the way we are? That we don't have to change anything about us to get his love. His love is unending. His love is shadowing us. Even in the darkest of times, his love is consistent and it's there. Can you take just a moment and say thank you for your love? Oh, we thank you for your love, Jesus. With Jesus, yeah, was the best thing I ever, ever done. Thank you. Giving God the glory. We want to thank God and ask God to just bless us. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever done. If you want to come to the altar and you have a problem, you want to come to the altar, this is the time to do it. But we want to pray. We want to thank God and we want to let God know how much we are in love with him. So take a minute and just think about what it means to be in love with God. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to know who you are. We thank you, almighty God, for bringing us this far, mighty long way. We thank you, oh Lord God, for being our rock protecting us from the rain, oh Lord God. We thank you for being with us when we didn't know which way to turn. When we was having problems on Monday morning, we didn't know what to do. But Lord God, you said just pray until the morning comes. We thank you, almighty God, for being who you are. We thank you for letting us know that we are your children and whatever we're going through, you are the best thing that has ever happened to us. And we ask that you bless us. We ask that you keep us, oh Lord God. We ask that you continue to be with us and hold us. We ask that you be in our families, in our workplace, and whatever problems we're going through. We ask that you just be in the midst of it. We know that things sometimes that we don't know which way to turn and we don't know what to do. But we know that you are the rock of our life. And we know that you will bring us from a mighty, mighty long way. We give you the glory, O oh Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you. And Lord God, when the day has come to end, and with all is said and done, we just give you praise and we open up our hearts and say you are who you are and you are the God that has bought us a mighty long way. You are the same God that has delivered us to where we are today. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. Do we have anyone that's visiting with us for the very first time? Any first-time visitors? Anybody visiting with us for the 
first time? What about the second time? Any second time visitors? Nobody second? Well, welcome family. Welcome to service this morning. Thank you. What we want to do now, we want to get up and we want to greet each other. Take two or three minutes. This group really looks like a very happy group, so give someone a hug and let them know that it's good to see them this morning, okay? So get up out of your seats for two or three minutes. part of our service where we open it up to receive our tithes and offerings. Can we have the hostess come forward, please? Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for just this opportunity to come before you and open up the church and just call your name. We thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to take this offering that it might bless someone 
and let them know that you're God and you still sit on the throne of life. We thank you, O Lord God, that you are multiplying. Lord God, we ask that you bless those that have a desire to give that is but they're not able to give. We pray that you will show favor in their lives. Lord God, we pray that you will bless those that are able to give and willing to give. And that it will that you will also show favor in their life, in their lives. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we would like to turn our attention to the screen. We have a number of things going on. We are in, we have the um, Friends Day is coming up in October the 7th. We have the youth gathering that's going to be in February, also in October the 14th. So please turn your attention to the screen. Come learn about the Jesus we never knew, our 40-day New Testament challenge. Begin praying about that special someone God would like for you to invite and watch how he will transform their life. Get ready to gather with friends and prepare to learn about Jesus through reading the Messiah Bible, the man, his methods, his mission, and his message. The Messiah Bible is available for purchase in the multi-purpose room for $10. Get your copy today. Please join us as we host our congregational business meeting on Sunday, October 21st at 9.15 a.m. in the multi-purpose room. Come prepared to listen, discuss, and discover God's hand in and through our church family. Please mark your calendars to join us on Sunday, October 28th, as we celebrate 33 years of connecting with God, growing together, and changing the world. Invite your family, friends, and neighbors to this momentous occasion as we continue to experience God's greatness. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise for all that he's doing here at South Bay Community Church? Listen, it's almost time for the word. Anybody ready to receive God's word this morning? I asked Pastor Tammy in our time of prayer this morning, I asked her, I said, what's your, for every service, we always have a vision, something that we hope that you all walk away with. And what she said this morning was that I want them to feel the presence of the Lord. I want them to know that whatever they're carrying, God's already taken care of it. And we want you to be encouraged to tell the good news of Jesus to someone else. Amen. So in this next song that we're going to do, and we're going to do it really quickly, it's a simple song. It's called Waymaker. And it lists all the different things that God is. Waymaker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That's who he is. And so as we are ministering this song to you, I really invite you to just close yourself in and sing it to yourself so you can be reminded that you have a way maker that's on your side, that you have a light if you're in dark places that's available to you, that you have a promise keeper who promised I'll never leave you, I won't forsake you. So we invite you to take whatever it is you're carrying this morning, whatever your cares are, and let's lay it at the feet of our way maker. Amen? Amen. Will you worship along with us this morning?
musicians and our ensemble. I'm so full. I can need a few minutes to pull myself together. But God is so good. God is so good. You know, I um, haven't told many people this story, actually. My, I've been so busy that I don't know that I have fully processed it. Processed it but um, with the Waymaker song and just reminding me how good God is. This week on Wednesday, a car ran into the front of my house. And praise God, my husband and I weren't there. It's very freaky still to think about it. But just thinking about God as a promise keeper and a way maker, and it could have turned out in so many other ways. And so God is good. God is good. God is good. Praise God. I hope you're feeling his presence. I hope you're feeling his love. And if you're not, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I got nothing. Good morning, family. I want to start with a question that may seem a little bizarre, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How many of you love a good party? You love a good party. Maybe not so much now, back in the day, whatever, but you love a good party. Okay. How many of you are just as happy staying at home and, and you're fine without a party? Anybody? Got a few of those? Okay. I'd be curious to see if that's an introverted, extroverted thing. I don't know. But you all probably know me who know me. Um, I am an introvert. I get my energy from solitude and silence, and so I've never really been a party person. Even now, if I go to a party, I usually find that one or two people and connect with them, and I find my little corner, and I'll be there all night. No one would ever, ever, ever confuse me with being the life of the party, ever. <laughs> As a teenager, I was shy, and as a young adult, and, and I found parties particularly challenging. So more often than not, if I was invited to one, I would give an excuse and I wouldn't go. And after a while, I noticed that I was getting fewer and fewer invitations. And I'll be honest, that hurt, because even though I was going to say no anyway, I still wanted them to ask me. But eventually, I realized that there was no one to blame for that except myself. I had declined so many invitations that people just got the message and they stopped asking me. And they moved on to those people who were going to say yes and, and have fun at the party. You know, I think in many ways, God offers us a similar opportunity. He gives us an invitation to join him in his party. We have an invitation E we each have an invitation with our name on it. And the question that we're going to wrestle with this morning is, what are we going to do about the invitation? If you would please open your Bibles to Luke 14. We'll be looking at verses 16 to 24. And it will also be on the screen. And I want to do something a little bit different this morning as we engage the scripture. You, I'm, in fact, I'm going to just have you continue seating this, seating this time. Because as I read this parable of Jesus, it reminded me of a play, reminded me of a, of a three-act play, actually. So I thought that we could engage with the scripture doing a little reader's theater this time. And so we've got four parts. I got a part for each section in the room. So we'll start over here. This section one, you all will be the narrators, and to make it a little easy, just know you're orange. So wherever you see orange, those are your lines. Right over here, section two, I'd like you to read the part of the servant, and your section is blue. So whenever you see blue words, servant, that'll be your part to read. Section here, section three, you will be the three invited guests. There's three different guests, but you'll read all the guest parts. Your color is yellow. So whenever you see guest, it'll be guest one, guest two, guest three. That's you guys right here. And then finally, section four, 
I will have you guys to be the master. You guys will be green when you see your color, and you'll read the green part. So has everybody got their lines? Know your parts? All right, let's hear the word of the Lord together. Narrators, begin. Gracious God, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that that you speak to us in so many ways. And while these words were spoken over 2,000 years ago, they are just as relevant and just as meaningful for us today. So God, as we come before your throne, we come with open hearts and open minds to hear the word that you have for us this morning. Please remove the messenger and speak to each of us in the customized way that only you can. And may we be faithful to obey. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, actors. Nice job. (laughs) When I read this parable, for some reason it just struck me like a play. And so I've kind of outlined today's message in three acts. Our text is a parable, a short story that Jesus was telling at or told at a dinner he was attending with a prominent Pharisee and some other prominent leaders. And if you read back earlier in the the chapter, at the beginning of chapter 14, and you watch what's happened till we get to this part of the story, you'll see that the party has become increasingly tense. The dinner party that Jesus is at has become increasingly tense. Because in reality, the Pharisees are trying to trap him. And so they're having this dialogue, and, and, and they really are not responding to Jesus. If you, if you read it, it's really interesting, because you can miss it with this parable to know what was really going on. And so by the time you get to this parable, the tension in the room is very, very thick. Jesus was seizing the opportunity along the way in this chapter to share with the Pharisees just how far from God's heart they really were, no matter how spiritual they thought they were. And so when you get to this story, there's a lesson for them, something that Jesus wants them to understand, but there's a lesson for us as well. So let's start with Act 1. Act 1, I'm calling the Invitation. Most of the action in this act is implied in that it happens before the story actually begins. We started at verse 16, and it says, A certain man was preparing a great banquet, and he invited many guests. Now, in those days, this would have been a very, very big deal. The meal would have taken a lot of time to plan, and so it would have been planned way, way in advance. There would have been a great deal of preparation to feed so many people. And we know that this wasn't just any old regular dinner because it is called a great banquet. It's a party, if you will. So the plans would have been lavish and generous. It would have been an amazing experience for anyone who was attending. Probably the event of the year. A wonderful gift. 
for a host to give. In this story, Jesus is painting a picture of the great lengths of preparation that, that God did for us. The great sacrifice that Jesus made for us to be reunited with God. This parable is about God's generous gift of salvation and the opportunity for us to be in a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. That we are under God's reign and rule. This is the party that we're invited into. It's, it's, it, it's a relationship with God that, that lends to a deep joy and a peace that only God can give. And I want to pause now and just say that if you don't know God that way, you are truly missing something. He's offering a personal relationship and an opportunity for you to get to know him and for him to get to know you in the deepest way. There's an invitation with your name on it. Many of us have already accepted that gift of salvation and we're enjoying a relationship with God. We feel connected, but I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that salvation is just the beginning. There is so much more. God is always inviting us into an experience of more of him and what it means to live into the kingdom of God, an invisible kingdom that we've just spent weeks kind of comparing with Wakanda. There's so much to learn, so much to experience, so much that God invites us into. He invites us to draw near to him. He invites us to connect with his family in a loving community. He invites us to use our gifts to serve a broken and hurting world. He invites us to forgive those who have hurt us so that love can flow through, freely through us. He invites us to be healed of emotional wounds and baggage that can stunt our spiritual growth. He invites us to cast all of our fears and our cares on him because he cares for us. He invites us to invest in the kingdom with our financial resources and watch what he does to multiply them in our lives. He invites us to learn about him through his word. He invites us to walk and talk with him daily. He invites us to surrender and trust him. God's invitations are infinite because we serve an infinite God. The Bible tells us that eyes have not seen or ears heard all that God has in store for those who love him. And that promise is not just talking about some afterlife. It's talking about the promise of God now. He has things we can't even imagine that our eyes and our ears haven't heard or seen right now for us. We're invited into an amazing adventure, a wondrous life with God today and forever. And even if you don't feel like that right now, even if you're going through a storm or a trial, the Lord is on your side, and God never, ever loses. You may not see it or feel it right now, but you can trust him, hold on. He has never failed, hold on. And he loves you more than you can imagine. Hold on. The party that we're invited into is an amazing relationship. And he has your name on the invitation. So my question this morning, my first question is, what is the invitation that God is calling you to into this morning? What might God be inviting you to do or be with him? If you're already saved, that part's done. What is God inviting you into now? Is he inviting you to know him more? Is he inviting you to take your, fifth, your faith commitment to another level, to take it more seriously? Is he inviting you to forgive someone? Is he inviting you to serve someone? Is he inviting you to use your gifts? Is he inviting you to surrender and trust him? I don't know about you, but at the end of the road, that's the one that always comes back to me. 
Am I going to surrender? And am I going to trust him? And it's a daily invitation. So what is God inviting you into now? What has your name on it? I don't want you to think too, too hard, but at the same time, I don't want you just to dismiss it and wait for the next thing I'm going to say. Hold this for a minute. What is God inviting you into? I know for a fact that God is inviting you into an amazing adventure. And that whatever that next step is for you, whatever that invitation is, it's going to be good. Now, good's not the same as easy, but it is going to be good. If you're not sure what God is inviting you into right now, that's okay. Something may bubble up later. I firmly believe the Spirit is working. And so keep an open heart, keep an open mind, and listen. Where is God wanting to take you? What is he inviting you into next? But if you have a sense of what God is inviting you to, and you have this, this idea of, okay, I know, I know what the invitation is. I invite you just to hold that in your heart and mind. Just hold it as we unpack Act 2. Act 2 in this story, I'm calling... A response. Act one was the invitation. Act two is the response. The next part of Jesus' parable, the host sends his servant to tell the guests that everything is ready. It's time for the banquet. Now remember, the invitations already went out, so this is not the first time they're hearing about this party. This is the time where the the servant is letting them know that all the preparations are ready, the party is ready to go, come on over, it's party time. But the response in the story is not what the host or the servants expected. When the servant makes his rounds to all of the invited guests who already RSVP'd, mind you, he gets a bucket load of excuses. Have you ever made up an excuse and you knew that wasn't the real reason, but you just hoped that you could let it slide? (laughs) There's a whole bunch of reasons why we do that. Sometimes we do that because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Sometimes we do that because the real reason is just too complicated, too long, too painful, too personal to explain. So we'll make up an excuse. Or maybe you just like to make up excuses and see how good you can get at it. (laughs) Earlier this year, Reader's Digest published a list of real excuses that people use to get out of work. These are real excuses that they collected from employers. One employee said she couldn't come to work because she accidentally got on a plane. (laughs) Don't know how you do that, but... That was her excuse. (laughs) An employee said she could not come to work because someone had glued her doors and windows shut and she couldn't get out of the house. Real, real excuse. An employee said he could not come to work because he had to attend the funeral of his wife's cousin's pet because he was the uncle and pallbearer. Now, if you are an animal lover and that makes sense to you, I apologize. It just seems kind of funny to me. And this one's my favorite, I think. An employee said that they could not come to work because their false teeth flew out the window while they were driving down the highway. (laughs) So we can come up with some doozy excuses. (laughs) And while the excuses in Jesus' story aren't as bizarre and as crazy as that, they are lame excuses. It's obvious that they're excuses because they're illogical and nonsensical when you really think about it. First invited guest said he couldn't come to the banquet because he bought a field and he had to go and see it. Okay, what? First of all, who buys a field 
that you haven't seen. But let's just say, let's say for argument, he had somebody buy it and somebody that he trusted, and, and so let's say that's true. But then the fact is he's already bought it, so why does he have to go right now to go see it? The second guest said he could not come because he had just bought five pairs of oxen and he needed to try them out. Okay. So you bought the oxen without trying them or without making sure that they would do the work required or without making sure that they were strong and healthy and, and not sick. Uh, okay, we'll just keep moving. But again, maybe there is a first century wheeling and dealing thing that I don't fully understand. So let's say that he did need to try him out. Still, he already owns the oxen. Why does he have to do it now? What's the urgency? The third guest had an excuse that at least had a little bit of a precedent and, and some plausibility. Apparently, in that day, there was a law that excused newly married men from certain kinds of events. But the excuse breaks down because that law was really applied to military involvement. So my question would be, well, why not just bring your wife to the banquet? And if for some reason that wasn't possible, he knew about the banquet for a very long time. And in most cases, I would suspect little wifey could go home to mother for a few days. So the reality is, as is true with every excuse, the guest simply didn't want to come to the party. They weren't interested in the banquet. They didn't want to come. And even more sobering, I think, is that they didn't really care about the host. To cancel this late date was rude and inconsiderate in that day. It's actually rude and inconsiderate in our day. It showed no regard for the work or the sacrifice that the host had made. They had already said yes. They were essentially spitting on the generosity of the host. They were not interested in the wonderful gift the host was offering them to share. The host had offered them a place at the party but he gave them a choice. While they said yes to the initial invitation, their true feelings was reflected in their action when it was time to go. This kingdom truth that Jesus gave around the table with the Pharisees was to give them a mirror for them to see themselves. While they believed that they were righteous and the special holy ones and chosen ones of God, they actually rejected the invitation that God was offering. They rejected the very gift of God that was sitting in their midst. And so I wonder if this parable is also a mirror for us this morning. I wonder if it is a mirror for how we may sometimes respond to the invitations that God extends to us. Like the invited guests, I wonder if we too give God excuses. Our excuses may sound legitimate and logical to us, but I wonder if we pull back the layers, might we really find lame excuses like the ones in the parable? On the outset, it may not appear that the excuses in the parable relate to us in any way at all, but if we look a little closer, the excuses actually fall into three categories that very much relate to us. The first invited guest gave the response that he could not attend the banquet because he needed to visit that field he just purchased. His priority was his possessions. For us, it may not be land, but we can be preoccupied with stuff. Stuff we own, keeping it, saving it, getting more of it, and we can easily get distracted and miss the invitations that God is offering to us. We get focused on maintaining and managing and maximizing things. And our possessions can block us from what God is inviting us into. 
The second invited guest gave the response that he could not attend because he needed to test his oxen. He bought five yoke, that's 10 oxen. Tells me that he was wealthy. And with that many oxen, we probably are looking at his livelihood. We're probably looking at his business. That suggests that his priority was his profession. And that can happen to us too, right? Especially living in the Bay Area. I understand, I get it. But I think we have to be careful not to let the demands of our profession usurp what God wants to do in our lives. We can easily miss the invitation that God is offering because our jobs can get in the way. And of course, I'm not advocating that we quit or anything, but, but I am raising the question for us to ponder. What are we seeking first? What is our priority? The third invited guest gave the response that he could not attend the banquet because he had just gotten married. His priority was people. Perhaps he was a people pleaser, and maybe that shaped his decisions and responses. For some of us today, it may be family ties or family activities that can distract us from God's invitation. If you were here a few weeks ago, you may be noticing that some of these things we're sharing sound very similar to the uh, throne that Pastor Brian erected, those idols that can block us from loyalty to the kingdom. The question is, which kingdom are we really seeking? Our excuses tell us something about our priorities if we're really, really honest with ourselves. Our excuses say something about the condition of our heart, says something about how we're feeling about God in that moment, says something about our spiritual journey. And this is not to beat us up, but it is a call just to be honest. Every excuse that we make gives us an opportunity to do a litmus test of our souls. Are we really seeking the kingdom? And I have, I, at least I know in my life, that's not a one-time answer question. It's a question I have to keep asking myself because it is so easily to slowly get distracted. The beauty of God, though, is that he continues to invite us. He, he continues to woo us and call us, but he doesn't force anything. He leaves the choice to us. So I want you to consider that invitation that perhaps came to your mind that you're, you're holding from when we talked about Act 1. If something came to your mind, something you feel God inviting you into, the question for you is, how will you respond? As you consider God's invitation for you, are you tempted to give an excuse? Or are you accepting the invitation and ready to go to the party? Whatever God is inviting you into, it is for his glory and for our good. It may feel challenging. The invitation may feel scary. But if we say yes to the invitation as it's been sung, Jesus will be right by our side. He's our way maker. And whatever it is that he calls us into, it's good. Again, maybe not easy, but it'll be good. So I encourage you, I encourage you this morning, whatever it is that God is inviting you into, say yes. Forget the excuses. However you feel God inviting you to experience him, say yes and go to the party. And that leads us to the third act of this story. Act one is the invitation. Act two is our response. And act three is whosoever will, let's go. Act three is really two scenes in the parable. The servant returns to tell his master what has transpired while he's been out and about, and, and the master directs him to go back out there and bring anyone he can find. He has him start with the streets and alleys, and the, the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. 
To which the servant says, we've already done that and there's still room. Then the master directs the servant to go to the roads in the country lane. Some Bibles talks about the hedges and the byways, moving further out. The master says, compel them to come in. The script said, make them come in because he wants his house to be full. I think this is such a beautiful picture of the heart and the character of God. You talk about a loving God. Everyone is welcome, just the way you are. Everyone is loved and valued in the kingdom of God. God seeks his people from far and near, wherever they are. It was probably those that were living further outside of town who maybe didn't really know the host. Maybe that's why he said, Propel, uh, uh, compel them to come. Maybe they didn't know him, so they needed a little bit more persuasion. My, the word compel in this setting means persuade, not to do by force. Think of it as a compelling argument. The servant is to have passion and persistence and persuasion as he shares the good news, the good news that all are welcome to this banquet. Can you imagine how that would sound to the lame and the crippled and the blind and the poor who were shunned from everything else? That, that there is a great banquet that they're invited to? Can you imagine how that would be to the people on the outskirts of town that never even heard of the host, that they are invited to this wonderful banquet? The servant is to have passion, persistence, and persuasion as he shares the good news. And for those of us who are already followers of Christ living in the kingdom of God, this third act has a special nuance for us as well. Because not only are we invited to the party, but we also are commanded actually to help bring people to the party. As followers of Jesus, we share in that role as the servant in the story. We're tasked to seek and bring others with us. Whosoever will, let them come. We, too, are tasked to seek the lost and the hurting and invite them to the party. We, too, need to stretch beyond our normal spheres and go to highways and byways further out than we may even think. And I don't necessarily mean literally. I mean that prayerfully we may need to be inviting people that we would never think to invite. We, too, must compel them with passion and persistence and persuasion. But what does that look like? Well, passion is your own experience with God that you share. Do you remember what it was like when you were a brand new Christian or, or if you've talked to a new Christian recently, they have a passion, they have a fervor that can be contagious. And sometimes when we've been walking with the Lord for a long time, we need a fresh anointing. We need a fresh passionate indwelling of the spirit spirits in us that's not the point but sometimes we need a fresh encounter with God so that passion bubbles up and becomes contagious as we seek to share the good news with others in our persistence we compel them when we bless them you remember what bless is here's a quick little quiz B crickets 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 <laughs> Begin with prayer, and the L, listen with care, and the E, eat together, and the S, serve with love, and the S is shall share your story. We compel persistently when we use bless to, sh to share God's love through friendship over time. We're not trying to beat people up with the gospel. We want them to see Jesus in us. We want them to fall in love with the Jesus that we were just singing about. And sometimes that takes time. It takes persistence. And you doing those blessed strategies is, a, is an authentic way to share your love. We can compel others and persuade them 
as we take the risk and invite them to come to Friend Day next week, for example. You may have to persuade them with a meal after church or, or to meet them for coffee, or you may have to go to their church, whatever. Again, we're not trying to force people, but we do want to persuade them to taste and see that God is good. We compel them when we encourage them to taste and see that God is good. It's the spirit of God that is working through us that will touch their hearts as they are ready. We want to be passionate. We want to be persistent. We want to be persuasive, but we don't need to be obnoxious. And just like the invited guests in the parable, some of the people we seek to compel will have a whole bunch of excuses. All that means is it's simply not their time. We can still bless them. We can still love them. We can still be in a relationship with them. But God says there is a full harvest out there, so move on. Let's see who else God has placed in our sphere, who else God is listening to, leading us to, that we can invite to the party. Our God is a good, good God. There's an invitation with your name on it, and there's an invitation right now for something that God is inviting you into. The question to consider is, how will you respond? And our God is a generous, generous God. He wants the banquet to be full. He wants a full house party. And he's inviting us, will you go? Will you bring whosoever will to this party with you? Brothers and sisters, our world is in trouble. Our communities are in trouble. Our families are in trouble. People are lost, and they don't even know how lost they are. People are missing what all that God wants to offer, and they don't have a clue. Jesus told us to go and make disciples. That's why he died for us, so we could all be reconciled to God in a personal relationship. You have the invitation that people are longing for deep in their souls, even if they don't know it. I want to share how I feel that God is inviting South Bay as a family, that there's an invitation God is giving us as a church family that I want us to respond to. But before we do that, I want to give you just some moments to close yourself in with God. See what's stirring in your heart. Think about the invitation that he's inviting you to. And think about the invitation to go and bring whosoever will. And as you close yourself in, let the words of this song minister to your heart. Hear them as God's words to me.
Thank you, Sister Nona. You know, when you, when you really think about it, how can we not tell it? It is, uh, God's love is so much bigger than just us and God. And as I was listening to the song, I was reminded that there's all kinds of ways that people are hungry, all kinds of ways that people are starving, all kinds of ways that people are needing literally, physically, emotionally. They need to know. And so one of the things that I, that's on my heart that I feel that God is inviting us into as a church is to be more intentional about how we go and tell. So there's a couple things that we've already been doing. You probably know that our fourth goal for the 2020 vision is to share the gospel with a thousand people by 2020. And hopefully you all got a little packet when you came in because we're going to, if you didn't, if you could just raise your hand for hope. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, though, you don't have the packets. Okay, well, I will talk you through what this is. Um, what you can get on your way out is a brochure. This brochure has our blessed tree on the cover. And inside are all the names of the people on the tree. We have over 300 names. And those are people you may recall if you were here that, that when we were doing the blessed series and we began with prayer, we asked God to put on our hearts people that we felt God was leading us to, to be in a relationship with and bless. Um, we wrote those names down, we prayed over those, and they're on our trees. And we have continued to pray as a staff over those trees. And I know that it can be easy, that happened months ago, and you can forget about it. You don't see the trees every day like I do. And so we want you to have a little handy copy of your, of your own. And just to remind you who you're praying for, and, and so we want to start, we want to keep praying, I should say. We want to keep praying. And so these are the people that we so far have blessed. And if you, um, if you did not get to do a, tr a tree, uh, a heart on the tree, uh, we'll bring out some more hearts a little later and we can add some more hearts. But on the back of here is a space for additional names. So you can write whoever you may be uh, that may be stirring for you to pr pray for and bless at this season. The next thing in this little packet is the invite card. And I wanted to spend a little time just sharing what we're trying to do with this. On the one side, the green side is Friend Day, which is next week. And Friend Day will kick off our series of Encountering the Real Jesus. But we are creating a service that will be um, guest friendly, that will be a, a wonderful experience with God that they will feel warmth and hospitality. And we really are prayerfully encouraging all of you. Start with the people on your blessed list. Invite them to come with you for friend day. You may have to take them out to lunch, like I said, but see if they will come with you. And because people tend to give excuses, you probably will have to invite a lot of people to get just one. But wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody had just one? We would double our worship experience if we all had just one. So I want to encourage you, continue praying for the people on your blessed list and, and, and consider, consider encouraging them to come for Friend Day. We're going to keep the service just a little shorter just so that uh, they can have a positive experience. And then on the back of the card is really another invitation. This is the Encountering the Real Jesus that we're going to kick off next week. Because so many people will say they like Jesus, they just don't like Christians. And so I'm excited about <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about this series because there's a double invitation embedded in here. You have the invitation for those of us who are believers that you never can go wrong when you're reading God's word. God will meet you, God will speak to you. And so you are invited to go deeper as you study God's word. Uh, 20, 30 minutes a day. There's a reading plan inside. And so the invitation is for you to go deeper. But this is also seeker um, friendly. And by that I mean that 
you, the people on your blessed list, your coworkers, family, whoever you want could also benefit from it because it's presented like a book. And so people will be able to read this, whether they're believers or not, and it will allow for conversation. There's four easy questions, and so people won't be intimidated. It's a great way to invite people you're praying for, your blessed people, to engage in God's word with you. It's a broad study of understanding the story. It's not a deep theological story. So it's a perfect blend for two invitations, for you and for someone that you want to invite on the journey with you. The next thing in the packet is a sheet that I was hoping that you could fill out in return. But this is a sheet that is count me in for the 40-day challenge. And it invites you to let me know whether you're going to read, uh, be part of the challenge. You can read or listen to the audio, whether you are willing to get into a group, whether you're willing to start a group, whether you need a group. Uh, we want to really next week make sure that we have all of the logistics ready because we're going to also make the same appeal to anybody who's here. If you want to do this challenge with us, we want to help you find a group. And so if you're willing to lead a group or start a group, it's, I want to know so that I can have all of that ready for next week. I've already been thrilled by people who told me they're, they're forming a group at their work. I know some people are forming groups with family. I think this has the potential to be a powerful experience for South Bay. I'm praying for a revival. I'm just telling you now, I'm praying for a revival. And so we need everybody to engage. So... These are in the, in the multi-purpose room. The Bibles are in if you didn't get one last time. If you did not fill out a form, I would love to know if you're participating with us. Two more things I want to share is save the date on October 20th. Um, we, uh, Second Chance Production will be doing Am I My Brother's Keeper? It's a gospel play. I've read the script. It's phenomenal. It's a, the perfect play to bring people who have questions about God, who aren't sure about God, who never want to step into church. The play is awesome. And so save the date. It's free. It starts at 6 p.m. And you'll hear more about that. But I wanted to tell you because this is the perfect thing to bring your blessed people to. Okay. And my last thing as we look at how do we go how do we take whosoever will and go to the party the last thing is I want to pilot something um, for this series I'm calling it's called a 24 7 prayer experience and we already have um, or at least 10 people that signed up from the eight o'clock service and I'll be inviting people if you want to join us in prayer for one hour so that we have somebody praying from from south bay for 24 hours you don't have to come here do it from your home you pick whatever hour you want i have a packet that i will give you so that you know what to do for that hour Uh, the packet is very interesting it's basically a devotional the hour will go like that and so if you are willing to join us as we seek to pray for this series pray for our friends pray for what god wants to do at south bay please meet me up here after church and you can look at what hours are available and then I will send you the materials. But South Bay, I'm excited because I believe that God is moving. It may not look like it when you look at all the empty seats, but I am not daunted. I know that God is moving. And so let us go with whosoever will and go to the party. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for your love. I am so grateful for this community, this family who loves you. And we love you together. And God, as we prepare for Friend Day and and the ways that you want to use us to tell your story, I ask that you would continue just to sensitize our hearts to see the opportunities that you are bringing to us. God, you said the harvest is plentiful. Well, we're laborers and we're ready to go. So show us the harvest and we will be faithful to tell them of your love. I'm so grateful, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
comes a time when we have to reevaluate our priorities. And one of the messages today is that there is no excuses. The opportunity is there, and Pastor Ted is doing a great job of giving us the opportunity to make us realize what are, what are our priorities that we need to take advantage of. As you go out into the foyer, please take a look at the tables. There's a lot of information on there, and there's a lot of a couple flyers on there. I think once she didn't mention that there is a morning glory flyer on there. Take advantage of it. There's someone praying for you every morning. And if you want to pray, join that prayer line in the morning, the information is there. So take advantage of it. There's no excuses. You can get involved. Can we please stand and close out the day? Lord God, we just thank you for the day. We thank you for your blessings and pray that you keep us. We pray that you will bless us as we go along our lives and just let your light shine. We pray that you be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.